Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, join my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will describe and explain the interactions between magnetic fields and magnetic and non-magnetic objects, so, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can describe and explain the interactions between magnetic fields and magnetic and non-magnetic objects. Before we get into magnetic interactions, let's first go over some basics of magnetic fields. A magnet is an object that creates a magnetic field. This field is invisible, but it's responsible for the most obvious property of a magnet, the ability to attract some materials like iron and attract or repel other magnets. A magnetic field is the area around a magnet that has magnetic force. All magnets have a magnetic field, no matter how big or small they are. Things that are attracted to magnets are called magnetic objects. A magnetic object can attract or push away another magnetic object. You also need to remember that magnetic forces are not related to gravity. The amount of gravity is based on the object's mass, while magnetic strength is based on the material that the object is made of. If you place an object in a magnetic field, it will be affected, and the effect will happen along field lines. Many classroom experiments watch small pieces of iron line up around magnets along the field lines. Magnetic poles are the points where the magnetic field lines begin and end. Field lines converge or come together at the poles. We normally say that magnetic field lines leave the north end of a magnet and enter the south end of a magnet. The forces of a magnet are strongest at the poles. This is because the magnetic field tends to be concentrated at the poles and spreads out in bulges between them. The Earth has a huge magnetic field as well. Because the core of our planet is filled with molten or melted iron, there is a large magnetic field that protects the iron from space radiation and particles such as the solar winds. You have probably heard of the poles of the Earth. These poles are places where our planet field lines come together. We call these poles north and south because that's where they're located on Earth. Quick check for understanding. What are three things you learned about magnetic field lines? Pause the video and take two minutes to write your responses. You got this. Now let's talk about magnetic fields and how they interact with non-magnetic objects. Magnets have a magnetic field that attracts other magnetic objects. So because of this, they attract together when they are close enough. If two magnets are moved closer and closer together, they will eventually reach each other's magnetic field and be very attracted to each other. Of all the materials in the world, only metals can be magnetic, but some metals are magnetic and some are not. The metals that are magnetic are also the metals that can be made into magnets. The most common magnetic metal is iron, which is the main substance in steel. So what determines if the object is magnetic? Great question. Every object is made of billions of atoms. Each atom has its own magnetic field. At most objects, these fields point into different directions because it doesn't have any magnetic domains or areas where groups of atoms align together. These objects are not magnetic because their atoms do not align with the magnetic field of a magnetic object when you bring it nearby. Rubber, plastic, wood, paper, and glass are examples of unmagnetized objects. Look at the following example. When you bring a magnet near these substances, their field lines do not point or align in the same direction. They remain unaligned and continue to point into different directions. Magnetic fields have no effect on these objects. Quick checks for understanding. Number one, what happens to the atoms of non-magnetic materials when they are brought near the magnetic field of a magnetic substance? Number two, why does this happen? Pause the video and take two minutes to answer. You got this. Now let's see the interaction between magnetic fields and magnetic objects. Magnetic materials have magnetic domains or areas where groups of atoms are aligned in the same direction. When you bring a magnetic substance near these materials, all of their magnetic domains align in the same direction and cause them to be temporarily magnetized. Iron, nickel, cobalt, and steel are examples of magnetic materials. This means that when you bring a magnet near, their magnetic domains align in the direction of the magnet. For example, Look at the domains of this magnetic substance before a magnet is brought near it. 
Notice that the magnetic domains point in random directions. But when a magnet is brought near, all or most of the magnetic domains align in the same direction and are attracted to the magnet. Here's another example. Notice that there is no effect in the field lines when plastic is brought near the magnet. The field lines continue to move in the same direction. This is because plastic does not have magnetic domains and therefore its atoms stay moving in random directions and are not attracted to the magnet. But you notice that the magnetic field lines move in the direction of the iron piece because its magnetic domains align in the same direction as the magnet. Quick checks for understanding. Number one. How are the magnetic field lines in a magnet affected when a non-magnetic object is brought near it? Number two, how are the magnetic field lines in a magnet affected when a magnetic object is brought near it? Pause the video and take three minutes to write your responses. We're excited to hear all of your brilliant responses. And that's our video for today. Now it's such an to see how proficient you are for describing and explaining the interactions between magnetic fields and magnetic and non-magnetic objects by taking our video quiz. Use your electron device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep going, going because it's not a one till you win. win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan this QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace, Peace and have, have a positive, positive productive, productive day. Come on, Math. Don't think. Just do. <sighs>